Here in Philadelphia, the Eagles won't play football until next weekend. But the Hawks play hoops today inside Hagen Arena, where we find a couple of firsts. St. Joe's welcomes Loyola of Chicago for the very first Atlantic 10 matchup between these two schools, with both teams eyeing their first conference win. Greer, normally the assist man for the Hawks, gets them going with a three. They can't hang on to the ball, and Drew Valentine told us yesterday it's about competitive discipline, and we've lacked it so far. There is yet another turnover. Two possessions, two turnovers. They come in all shapes and sizes for Loyola. It has to be enormously frustrating because they're such a good shooting team when they keep the ball. They're thinking about good shooting team, Kasper Kwanczyk makes it two for two for St. Joe's from beyond the stripe, and they're out to an 8 nothing lead. Yeah, that's highest praise. And Welsh inside has the ball knocked away. There's Alston. Strong rebound and strong up to the glass, and he'll get two for that. You have to be constantly aware of Alston. He's like a dominant pass rusher. You have to make sure he doesn't get to the quarterback. In Alston's case, you got to make sure he doesn't get to the glass. It's the old fundamentals. you got to put a body on him. If you don't box Alston out, He's going to get a ton of second chance opportunities. Appreciate the rush in the quarterback reference there in Wild Card Weekend. John. To, well to, to my my play by play sidekick who was Iowa's quarterback from his Big Ten days. Good Try, trying to put it so you can understand <laughs> it, Paul. A little warm up here. Some hoops for a couple of football games today. Three tomorrow. And then one Monday night, Greer now has two threes. And I mentioned, John, that they shoot more threes than any team in the A 10. And today they're shooting them awfully well. That's four three-pointers already. No, you, you said it perfectly, Paul. And he's used to going up against good coaches in the Missouri Valley, but now he stays up at night worrying about the personnel a little bit more, the other team, how they're going to stop these guards or double big guys, just more good players. And that's why the A-10's been a double-digit league. I'm sorry, multiple bid league forever. Good job on the reverse there by Golden. He has two buckets now in Loyola. The coach slowly stopping the bleeding. They were down 12-0. Kennedy spin move. Little fade away from the lane. Make it a 12 to 2 run for Loyola. See if they can get this one. Greer tries again. And the home bounce there to end that skid. I like that Greer is taking on that challenge. If you're going to leave me open, I'm not going to be shy. Quanchik hit the first three of the game here. St. Joe's made four out of five. Reynolds launches one from way downtown finds the bottom of the nets. We talked about showing confidence in your players, communicating with them. When you're coaching 30-year pros, you have to be that way. But he's brought that to the college game, and I know his players appreciate it. And Lynn Greer is feeling it. That's his fourth three, and he already has 14 points. How much longer will Coach Valentine stick with his game plan? The mathematics say stick with it, that Greer can't keep shooting this way. Good pass there to Bleachmore, see if he can cash in. That's the ninth three-pointer in their largest lead once again. Now it's 19. Greer patiently looking, looking. Inside, tough shot for Reynolds. Watch it, that'll count. He hit the first bucket of the day, and this is the final shot. It was kind of a game of runs in that first half because they got out to a 12-0 run, and then Loyola cut the lead to 21-18, but the finish was all about St. Joe's and how they were shooting. In fact, Loyola went the last seven minutes with one field goal. How about Greer made more threes in 40 minutes, four, than he did the whole season prior? Three threes this season coming in, four in the first half for Greer. And they start out with an air ball, that's Norris. Most players would think, oh, Schweiger's going to make that layup. But a great rebounder, they anticipate misses. What a give inside. And Obina, second time today he has benefited with a giant slam. Watch Obina on pick and rolls. He's stopping these guards and recovering back to the rim. Kwachek, 1-3 in the first half, now 1 in the second. Greer showing, sharing the wealth, sharing the rock to his teammates. And St. Joseph's feels good right now. What a great addition inside that would be here for the Hawks. So we're talking about a human factor here. Obina was thought by many to be an all-conference type player this year. That hasn't happened. Today, he absolutely is. Greer, 14 points, has that one knocked away. Great hustle play by Norris. And here comes the veteran point guard, four years on campus. 
Look at Reynolds muscling down low with the mismatch against Alston. Skip pass opens up Schweiger, and that's textbook. It was still a long way to go, down 17, but Royals offense been much better here. They could use that three, and they got it. Jaden Dawson, the freshman. See, they're looking for Alston inside. Welsh sees an opening inside. And couldn't get the left hand reverse to go. And the Hawks are playing way off of Walsh and Golden, daring them to shoot and waiting for them if they do drive with a big body there. Good game plan for the Hawks. Leading score for the Hawks, for the Hawks, Lynn Greer, 14 points. He's on the bench right now. Watch it. Well, what a second half he's had. I, I've never seen a team shoot so well, but not handle the ball well. Usually those two skills go together. But it's a quandary for the Ramblers right now. That's a great point, because if you're shooting it well, you're comfortable with the ball. That's a great shot there. Christian Winborn. Example of how many of these Hawks are chipping in with points. But the rest of these players you see out here, freshmen or sophomores, and he said the result is you just have to be patient. They'll be very good one game. Reynolds for three, got it. And then the next performance will be different. And he's catching them this afternoon on an upswing. A lot of one on one there for Marquise. Freshman up and in, circus shot goes. Jaden Dawson. Showing up to here today while well, in the backcourt, Braden Norris, their normal leader, has struggled with his shot with only three points. You see that Loyola uniform out there, Coach, and you think about them winning Missouri Valley Conference titles. This is their first season in the Atlantic 10. You also think about them in the postseason. Five years ago, they made it to the Final Four. Two years ago, Sweet 16. They were in the tournament a year ago. Winborn deep three, caught it. And that's how the afternoon's been going for St. Joe's. But this is a different Rambler team with 11 newcomers and only about 30% of that production from last year back. You can pick out one thing that St. Joe's needs to keep moving forward to go from where we saw him at the bottom of the A-10 up more toward the middle in the next couple of weeks. What would it be? Defense led by Obina, period. The, the shooting, as you said, will come and go. Defense can travel. Defense can be a constant. So let's figure out who the walk-ons are because, and there's Bleachmore continuing his strong game. Walk-ons are the salt of the earth. If the world had more walk-ons, it would be a beautiful place. <laughs> think, that, think of a walk-on. They work as hard as everyone else on the team. They don't get a scholarship. They rarely get playing time. They rarely get attention. So let's give a shout out to the walk-ons here. If I had a company, I would hire all walk-ons because they know nothing but work and they want no credit. Final possession here for St. Joe's. What an afternoon it has been. From the start, shooting threes extremely well. They made four of their first five three-pointers. They finished by making 14 out of 30. And that paves the way to their first A-10 win of the season by 31 points against Loyola of Chicago. Drew Valentine, Billy Lang with the hug, and the Hawks with a celebration that comes with an 86 to 55 win over the Ramblers. Thanks for being with us here in Philadelphia. Now we go to Richmond, St. Bonaventure, Mike Corey, and Matt McCall.